Harry Potter and the Deathly Hallows Part 2. First of all, I just want to say that I, uh, I had two reasons to see in this film. The first reason was because it's the final Harry Potter film. The number two reason is because uh, the Dark Knight Rises trailer was supposed to be in the trailers. But it wasn't. I was so disappointed. All of a sudden the movie started playing after the credits and I'm like, what gives? What the fu- Anyways, let's get right into the movie. First of all, people are gonna say there's not enough character development in this movie. Hello, you had seven movies prior that did just that. This is all about the epic conclusion. The epic battle between dark forces and, you know, the, the wizards, the wishes and wizards of Hogwarts. The, out, the ultimate conclusion, the ultimate rivalry between Harry Potter and Lord Voldemort coming to an end. First off, I gotta say, the special effects, fantastic, 3D, even better, and the acting is just phenomenal. Every play, everybody plays off each other so well, especially Neville Longbottom. He's like the unsung, uh, you know, underdog hero of this entire movie, and, and it's like you, know, you get bits and pieces of him, and then ultimately, when he, if you read the books, he kills the last Horcrux, which is um, Lord Voldemort's pet snake, and. Everybody in the theater actually gave him a round of applause for it. It was just, it was so great. It was awesome. In case you don't know the story, which is probably only 1% of you, because I think almost everybody knows the story at this point. Harry, Ron, Hermione, they're looking for Lord Voldemort's Horcruxes that have his soul in them, and if they get rid of the Horcruxes, it makes Lord Voldemort mortal, and hence, you can finally kill Lord Voldemort and ending this war. So, they're finding these Horcruxes, they're destroying them, they end up going back to Hogwarts, which sets up for the ultimate battle, uh, the, the teachers and staff, and uh, people from like movie, from you know, past movies, they all come back and they, to, to defend Hogwarts, they, they cast spells, and it's, it, it's, a, it's Armageddon with magic. And essentially, Lord Voldemort wants to get to, to Hogwarts to kill Harry and finally take over the magic and muggle worlds. There are a few things in this movie that, you know, just were a little bit off. Uh, they would take something, they would either not have this in the movie, or they would take something from the book and just change it just a little bit. And, you know, all movies do that. Um, a perfect example is, um, if you read the books, you know what happens to the older one afterwards. Uh, and in the movie, they, they change it. Um, you know, they changed the fate of the Elder Wand. But, you know, it was the symbolism that, that mattered at that point, and I really just didn't care, because it was actually uh, fitting, it was, uh, it was also fitting, and it made sense to uh, the, um, the viewer. Some of the greatest scenes were, uh, was the near-death experience uh, that Harry had with Dumbledore, and then another great scene was Harry seeing uh, Professor Snape's uh, memories, showing him that uh, where Snape's loyalties truly lie and why things are the way they are and it actually leads to Harry to finding out that he himself is actually a, a horcrux for Lord Voldemort and Harry has to let him has to let Lord Voldemort actually kill him in order to get rid of the horcrux but um you know so the story is just it's so emotional and it's it's bittersweet you you hate you hate to see it go and it's just you know, when you walk out, you're like, you know, it's all over. This sucks. But the movie itself was completely awesome. And about 95% of what you see in the book is in the movie. So hats off to Warner Brothers and, you know, filmmakers for getting the story pretty much about 99% accurate throughout this, throughout this entire thing. You get to see some funny moments uh, between the characters, uh, especially Neville Longbottom. I just cannot stop thinking about that, you know. Way to go, Neville, you the man. But and it, it just, just, it's just so awesome how the characters play off each other. And they, and they, you know, you get that, you get that Harry Potter feel that you, that you felt in the, like the first few movies that they had, you know, and then it kinda thinned out a little bit in the last movies, but this one, it comes back with, with a bang, or in this case, a magical explosion. But ultimately, this movie was just, epic. Uh, I, actually, I don't think even words can describe how great this movie was. I literally had a mental orgasm after I got done watching it. I was just like, oh my god. Amazing. Just pure amazing. If this movie does not get nominated, if this movie does not get an Academy Award, th that is just a shame. That is, that would be just, just downright disrespectful. This is one of the greatest lucrative franchises of all time, and the, and the acting, everything came together perfectly. This has to get some kind of award. But in the end, we gotta give special thanks to the person who started this all, who just decided one day, you know what, I'm gonna, I'm gonna write a book 
maybe people will enjoy it, then we'll see what happens. J.K. Rowling, you have created one of the greatest stories ever told. J.K. Rowling, you have made one of the greatest stories of all time, and it will be idolized and remembered for years to come, if not generations to come. There will be kids 50 years from now still reading these books. I can guarantee that. J.K. Rowling, thank you for creating probably one of the greatest stories any of us will ever get to know and read. And for that, I thank you. And ultimately, Harry Potter and Deathly Hallows Part 2, my preference scale, got a perfect 10 out of 10. And as for my critique scale, even though they changed just a few things, ultimately, it's Hollywood. I understand why they do it. I give it a perfect 10 out of 10. Therefore, it gets a perfect 100% for 18. Joining uh, my elite list of movies that have a perfect 100% rating being The Dark Knight, District 9, and now Harry Potter and Deathly Hallows Part 2. Should you go see this film, I don't even think I need to tell you.